So I know Tightline just did a video on this, but um, I was filling my box with them and figured I'd show you guys my uh, Calibatus version of a hackle sack fly. Um, like I said, if you want to learn from an expert, not just me, uh, Tightline just did a video on how to do the hackle stack, but um, this is my Calibatus versions of it. Uh, great on lakes. Uh, so far anyways <laughs> um, this year might prove me different but great fly to fill your box with so I'm just starting my thread there and this is uh, some uni a dot and all of done and this is a size 16 here um, just to show you what we're tying here I've got a this is a size 20 of it here uh, if I can get the camera focused there we go it's a size 20 hackle stack um, cow betas are typically smaller um, from what I've seen on my lakes around here they're about size 16, 18, sometimes down to 20 um, but I've seen some bigger ones around too I don't know if they were gray drakes or what but there are some bigger flies that looked a lot like a calabetus but we'll see um, so first off I'm tying my tailing material here and just picked up this cape I'm really excited about it um, been tying lots of different flies of it. It's a Talk de Leon. You can see there. This is a medium pardo. So we're just going to take one feather of that there. And I've been working on this one for a little bit. So strip off about half a dozen or so fibers lining up the tips there. And strip those off. And looking at just about a hook length and a quarter shank. They're fairly long tails on these little guys, so I like to have a fairly long tail on these. Um, just gonna tie that in right at the back. Bring it back to about halfway between the point and the barb. So you got a nice long tail there. Then I like to kind of prop this tail up a little bit, so we're gonna take one wrap underneath nice and pointed up I'll cinch that up nice and tight take a few wraps to save it <clears throat> and I'm just going to trim off these butt ends so they meet that point where we tighten our thread right, clean up those start building a little bit of taper there and then I'm going to take my dubbing and this is an obvious choice. This is a fine and dry in the Calabatus color. Um, looks really olive in the pa packaging, but it goes on fairly gray. Just a small amount on there. Really nice and thin. And build the taper into the dubbing noodle. Um, if you try to go back over it and go back and go back over it and build up your taper that way, sometimes you can end up with a lot of steps. Um, there's a lot of people that I know that are good at doing it without building steps into it, but um, I'm not one of those people, so I like to build in the taper into the dubbing noodle itself. So I've got that. I'm going to bring back the dubbing just to right where we tied in those tails. Bring it forward. And a little bit more, I think, there. Alright, so we got a nice little taper on that dubbing there. So I'm going to strip off the rest that I didn't need. I put on way too much. Cover up. Then, um, what I like to do on these dubbing, bod dubbing bodies, pull back all the fibers and take a couple wraps right in front. Help save everything little bit of dubbing left on my thread there try to get it off all right and then and build 
about two and a half inches loop with your finger here. I'll try to zoom out a little bit so you can see it. If you don't see my ugly mug in the process. So just building up. It's about two, two and a half inches of thread here. I'm going to make that loop about two or three times and come down at the bottom and tighten those up against that dubbing body that you just had. And at this point, I just like to take that there and then take bodkin, um, bodkin scissors, whatever you got. I like to put a couple twists in it so that we get a little bit more of a parachute post, less the thread, a little bit more parachute post down at the bottom here. I'll see what I mean in just a second here. Let me tighten you back in. Focus there. There we go. So now I still got that bodkin end up in the thread up here out of view. And I'm just pulling those thread apart so you get a little bit more of a post down at the bottom. Makes it a little bit easier to tie in than trying to wrap around just plain thread. Oop, lost the loop there. Try that again. Sneak my finger back in there. And then, <clears throat> one thing I like to do, just to make sure everything saves itself, is take a little bit of my uh, thread wax there, wax that up, wax a little bit up the uh, bare thread too. Just helps everything stick together and stay in one piece a little bit better. All right, and then um, on. Most of them you can get with uh, Grizzly Hackle. Um, I don't have Grizzly Hackle in the really, really small sizes, so I like to keep everything the same. So I've got a, uh, I believe this is medium done. This is a Whiting Saddle Hackle. And I'm just going to tie that in. And I like to keep the hackles right up tight against the body there. So that way you're not wrapping bare stem around too much. I could take that up to the front and then trim out our stem there. And then bring your thread all the way back up back to where your, your essential parachute post is going to be. And this part, if you want to see a person who's better at it do it, you can go watch that tight line video. But um, I'm just going to take the index finger of my right hand, put it through that loop. I'm going to take my hackle with my left hand, wrap it around, take it with my middle finger and my thumb of my right hand and trade this around, wrapping up maybe about eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch or so. Just enough to cover up your thorax area and start wrapping back down. Once you get down to the bottom, then I like to take this parachute post with my right hand and I'm just going to kind of brush everything out of the way, keeping this piece of hackle really tight. If you let go and you're still pulling on your parachute post, all these wraps are going to come undone and it's not going to be a good deal. So I'm going to keep that really tight. Now I'm going to pinch down as hard as I can. Just keep everything secure. Keep this pinch down against the shank of the hook there. Take the bobbin, wrap up over top, and I like to just secure this in all the way down to make sure it's not going anywhere. Once you got that tied in with about three or four good wraps, I'm going to take this up along with all the fibers that you caught in and just trim these out. I'm sorry my fat fingers are going to get in the way here, but that's the way it's got to be. And trim all that out, these scragglers that you got left, trim those out. And then take a little bit more of your dubbing here. Just a small amount. You've got a little bit of way to go and you don't want this part to be too, too fat. So I'm just going to wrap it up on the thread. Push our dubbing up. Pull everything back out of the way again. I can lose your focus there. There we go. Wrap this all the way up. And all the way back down to the eye. 
really make sure that you don't crowd the eye too much here because you're going to need a fair amount of space to tie it in tie in your post there give myself a little bit of a thread base and take this parachute post I take it my uh, right hand there brush all these back as tight as you can pull this down to the front and then I pinch it in place if we can focus again pinch it in place and then take one wrap there if you can without screwing everything up take one two wraps three wraps maybe run the thread in the hook there and pull it real tight and then take everything same as before if we can focus I need a new camera pull everything back and then clean up and it is important to build up kind of a thread head here because you don't want that thread that you just tied in to go anywhere because once that comes out everything else comes apart so that's no good and then uh, whip finish here again pulling everything out of the way Trim our thread out. Drop your bodkin on the ground. That's a good thing to do. And then trim your parachute thread out of the way. Focus again. And I like to just touch that thread head, just a little bit of super glue, just right on top. And I just take all the hopical fibers, bring them up to the top, and then push them back down again. And that's about it. Great little Calabatis colors. Um, like I said, great on uh, lakes, slack water, anything like that. Anywhere you got Calabatis, anything that you got that looks like this, trust me, it'll work. Uh, uh, Cocktail Leon is really nice. It's got that built-in barring. Um, nice kind of muted gray color.